When it comes to good observational drawing, I'd say it's more observation and less drawing. So if I drew this line right here and asked you what angle is that, you probably couldn't tell me because you're missing one important piece of information. And that is either a horizontal or a vertical to measure it relative to. So now you could say, well, this is a 30 degree angle, something like that. You probably don't even realize how often you're looking at an angle and visually measuring it. So let's say this is my paper here, and I've got a cell phone on the table in front of me. And I go to draw it sort of a rectangular shape. And that's the first line I draw. Well, I'm going to base all the rest of the lines off of that initial one. So maybe it's sort of a rectangular form like this. Well, it's very possible that this initial line here, this angle, was wrong. And that if I were to try and draw it again, I'd maybe look more carefully and see that actually it was a bit shallower of an angle relative to the edge of the paper. And so in this case, all the rest of my lines would be different, and my resulting image is going to be quite a bit removed from that first try. So what this came down to was one incorrect measurement, this first angle here being quite a bit different here, and then the rest of my drawing was a series of rippling mistakes, all starting from that first bad measurement. So we can agree that visual measuring is incredibly important. Well, how do you do it? How do you avoid this and have a better shot at measuring correctly the first time? Turns out, your pencil can do it for you. Here's a quick diagram of what you should be doing. Take your pencil in your hand, extend your arm all the way, locking your elbow, and then make a vertical line in the air with your pencil. What you then do is look past the pencil, at your subject, and you have something to compare the angle to. Maybe if what you're measuring is a horizontal angle, well then you'll turn your pencil 90 degrees, keeping your elbow locked, and then you have a horizontal line to compare to. So you're holding your pencil vertically, you're looking past it, and you see the subject. So now if I want to draw this top angle of the phone, I have something to compare it to. That vertical edge of my paper is exactly the same angle as that pencil. So I know that the top edge of that phone has to match. See here? That's parallel. And once I get one angle in place, I'm much more likely to get the rest correct. Well, now I've turned my pencil sideways. And at this point, it's much easier to measure that bottom angle of the box. So it's going to be about like this. And I know that the others are roughly parallel to that. And in this way, I can start to mass out this shape, carefully measuring those first angles. And I can probably guess that these verticals here are pretty close to actually vertical. So they'll be a bit parallel with the edges of my paper. And in this way, I come to a much more accurate drawing. But if something's not looking quite right, you've got your pencil, you've got the subject in front of you, and you can compare the angles. So if I was noticing, for instance, that the bottom angle of my drawing was wrong, something just wasn't seeming quite right about my image, well then I would hold up my pencil, look at the subject's angle, and I would correct my drawing accordingly. Your homework this time is deceptively simple. What you're going to do is draw 20 phones, or really any rectangular prism will do. For me, I have an old blocky phone, so it's very handy. And what you're going to draw these on is a 2 by 3 inch format. So that means you get out your ruler, you mark off a bunch of these little 2 by 3 inch rectangles, and then try and fill as much of it as you can with the phone. And what that'll do is it'll give you nice verticals and horizontals to judge your angles against. These are not meant to be drawn quickly. 
You're definitely not doing details. The important thing is to get used to looking carefully at an object and seeing those angles accurately. So you might be thinking, well, sure, I'd like to measure angles, but that's boring subject matter. Well, that's the point. This is going to be extremely obvious if you get it right and very obvious if you get it wrong. There's not much complexity in this object. And for those of you out there that are watching this video, kicking your feet back and saying, oh, I got this. I did this years ago. Do it again. This is one of those things that I'll do every couple months and every time I do worse than I think I'm going to do. Measuring these angles, an observed object, very simple, is a lot harder than you think. It's a great thing to practice, so give it a go. 20 phones.